Hey guys, it's Hillary. Welcome back to my channel, Enneagram and Coaching. I'm your certified Enneagram life coach. And today we are going to be talking about the subtypes of the type nine. So yes, you guys have been requesting this video for a long time. I know I've seen your comments and I've been prepping for this series. And so we are going to start with the type nine today, but don't forget to push subscribe because this is a series and I'm going to go through all the types and teach you guys all about the subtypes of all nine types. And then also, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That's super important for my channel. It lets me know that you guys want more and that you love me teaching the Enneagram on this platform. So let's get started, guys. The first thing I want to start with is learning your type is super important. So if you haven't learned your type yet, you might want to learn your type before you start to learn about subtypes. And if you're coming to me today knowing your type, well, then this is the next step. The next step after learning your type would be learning your subtypes. So let's start with what are subtypes? Well, everybody has these. There's three of them and they are the basic survival instincts that really you learn as a child. And the three instincts are called the self-preservation instinct, the social instinct and the sexual instinct, but, and that one also can be known as the one-to-one -one instinct. So those are the three instincts. And to be honest, we have all three, right? These are basic survival instincts. So you do have all three, but one is dominant and this would be called your subtype. And so that's why, that's where we get the word subtype from. So for example, I'm a type nine and my subtype is social. So I wanna go a little deeper into what is self-preservation? What does that mean? What is social? What does that mean? And what is the sexual and what does that mean? So the first instinct is self-preservation. And you will also see this by somebody's type um, as an SP. So that's how you know their dominant instinct is a self-preservation instinct. And what does this mean? Well, their first instinct is, do they have enough food, money, resources, time, clothes? They have a need to avoid danger. Like these, this is their first instinct is the self-preservation instinct. Okay, so moving on to the social instinct, which the letters for this one is S-O. And apparently Luke wants to be in here with us, but it's fine. For the social instinct, community is very important to them. They're super aware of other people. They walk in a room. They can kind of feel where everybody's at. They're very aware of what's going on and how people feel and what they need and that type of thing. And they want to have a positive impact with everybody. They kind of like get along with the herd. They have that herd mentality. It's the social instinct. The third one is the sexual instinct, which is also known as the one-to-one. -one, and the letters for that one would be SX. This one is the most energized instinct out of all three of them. And they're gonna really want an intimate bond with one person. So where you have that social, they're, they're feeling everybody. The, the sexual is more about the one-on-one -on -one bond. And it's not like it's not like, oh, I gotta find my soulmate connection um, partner that way. Cause like every type, is gonna have that kind of instinct. They just, it's just that intimate bond. They have a drive for intimacy with the one person at a time. And the way you can think about this is, is Ian Morgan Cron says like, if you were to walk in a room or like a party, what is your first instinct? Is it like, okay, what's going on in the kitchen? Is there enough food? It's like that environmental instinct, like the needs being taken care of. What's the temperature in the room? Um, is it comfortable? That type of thing would be your self-preservation instinct. The next one would be social instinct, which is how how is everybody in the room doing? Like that's my first instinct is to be like, how is everybody feeling? I can feel the room out and, and kind of want to almost like um, instinctively uh, be there for everybody in the room, make sure everyone's having a good time. The third one is the sexual or the one-to-one -one instinct. And they're more likely to go to one person in the room. They're going to merge. They're going to want to they're gonna go towards that one person and um, start talking to one person versus the whole group or what or the environment. So, does that make sense? Uh, I really liked it when I heard Ian Morgan Cron describe it that way. It made a lot of sense to me. So I hope it does to you guys too. Okay, so that those three that was such a basic description of all three of them. And to be honest, I just wanted to give you a basic description of the three instincts because in today's video we're gonna go through the type nines three instincts, you know, which gives them their subtype. And to be honest, it's really important that you figure out your dominant instinct and then learn about the other two. And what they say is one is dominant, 
one you use a little bit and one you're, is kind of like a blind instinct that you haven't used or haven't really needed to use. And the way we like to teach it is we really want to bring all three into balance because all three instincts are important and we need to use them. And what's one of the greatest things about learning your dominant instinct? Well, it's going to tell you, it's going to help you understand like, why do things bother me? Why do things trigger me? Why does that make me happy? Why do I really need to take care of that at first? You know, it's like, it's gonna help you understand yourself even better than knowing your type does. And so that's a great piece to finding out your dominant subtype. And then the next piece is your relationships will be easier, right? If you learn your own instinct and then learn other people's instinct, it'll really help you. So for me personally, my instinct is social. I'm a nine wing eight with the subtype social. And knowing my instinct, one, helps me to know why it bothers me if other people don't have that same first instinct. Um, and two, release other people from needing, from me thinking they should have that instinct, like that's the right instinct, because it's not, right? They're all three important. So knowing each other's instinct gives us a greater appreciation for each other. And it helps me, like, if I, like, my kids have different instincts than me. And it helps me understand, like, there's a reason why they're not always like, how is everybody doing in the room? That's just not their first instinct. So it just helps us have more grace and understanding for each other. So the bottom line is learn your own and then also learn what other people's instincts are. Okay, I've just covered a ton of stuff. So let's move on and actually start to dig in the type nine subtypes. Okay, so let's start with the SP. This subtype seeks a sense of well-being through comfort. They like comfort foods, they like comfortable things, maybe clothes, blankets, familiar routines. This is the self-preservation nine. They usually are the ones that are going about life at their own pace. They're extremely patient. They have a ton of common sense. They don't like having their routines or lifestyles change. So, and actually I can relate to this instinct a ton every day after the end of my day, I work from home and I'm in my office a lot, but when I'm done, I am done. I literally go upstairs, put comfy clothes on, get a comfy blanket, even though I live in Arizona and it's super hot. I like love blankets and I love comfy things. And so I definitely, even though the social is my dominant, I, I can relate to this instinct a ton. Okay, so let's move on to the social subtype, which is the SO. This subtype is the social glue in organizations, groups, families. I know I definitely play a big role in our family being the glue that holds things together, holds people together. They really want everyone to feel like they belong. And, and that's super important to the social nine. An example would be all my friends, they kind of tell me they like to say that I'm a gatherer because I love to gather groups together. I love to make sure everyone feels like they belong. They have some place to be. They're seen, they're heard, you know, that's, that kind of plays into me being a social nine and they call me the gatherer. And so, yeah, they just want to make sure everybody, you know, belongs. But here's the crazy part. The social nine, they never actually feel like they belong in which is true. I feel like they kind of hold themselves apart, even though like they're the glue that holds everyone together. There's something in them that never feels like they fully fit in. And the last thing I would say about the social nine, they are the nine that is more outgoing and cheerful. They can resemble a type three or a type seven. I get that a lot. And to be honest, the reason is, is because the social nine is actually called a counter type. And I haven't explained this yet, but every type has a counter type and it's the type that doesn't look like you would think the type looks like, right? There's a lot of stereotypes out there, especially of the nine. And I actually don't always fit that mold, but at the core of me, the core fears, desires, weaknesses, um, longings, those are mine. So I know that I am definitely a nine and I can relate to everything else for the most part, but I don't always come across as a nine. And that is because I'm a social nine and we can resemble a three or a seven at times. And like I said, it's called the counter type. Every single type has a counter type. And as I teach the subtypes, I'll let you know each time which one is the counter type. Okay, so let's move on to the last one, which is the type nine sexual subtype, which is the SX. So this subtype, they find their sense of well being by merging with somebody or something. And so the nine will merge with people in order to kind of like, I don't know, figure out their own identity. I don't, I don't even think it helps them figure out their own identity, but they merge with somebody else's and can kind of become a little bit of their identity, if that makes sense. This subtype, they tend to be more dreamy, shy, gentle. They have a really vivid imagination. They can get lost in like, 
mm, like fantasy, like heroic fantasy. They can kind of get lost in that. Um, I definitely have an imagination like that, but this one would be, for me, the third one that I use. And the last thing is they have a childlike aura about them and they can resemble a type four or a type six. So I guess not to confuse you, but the type nine, you know, they can actually feel like all nine types. Why? Because they can merge with all nine types. And so that's why I say the sexual subtype can resemble a four or six just because of some of these little things that I've talked about today. Okay, so that's it. Those are the three subtypes within the nine. So it's like the three instincts within the nine that are called subtypes. <laughs> Does that make sense? I'm trying so hard not to confuse you guys, but it's so important that you learn this. And if you want more info, I have a great book recommendation for you. This book, can you see it? I don't know if you can see it. I will link it down below, but it's the complete Enneagram, 27 paths to greater self-knowledge, and it goes through each of the subtypes in each type. And so that's how you get 27, but it's a great book on learning um, the subtypes more in depth. And like I said, I will have a link for you down below uh, that'll link you right to that book. So that's all I have for you guys today. I hope that helped you. Um, don't forget to push the subscribe button because I have lots of videos coming your way. I have eight more subtypes to do. I'm gonna actually try to do one to two of these a week. Um, I, I'm gonna sprinkle in other videos so that I don't get so burnt out on just doing subtypes, but I'd like to get them to you as fast as I can. So push that subscribe button so that you don't miss out. And then like the video if you like this video today and you want more. Uh, two more things before I let you go. First one is, if you don't know your type or you're still struggling with your type, I offer a Discover You typing session. It's a one hour session with me over Zoom or FaceTime or whatever you choose. And we uncover not only your type, but usually your wing and your subtype. So if you want help with that, I'll link that down below um, if you want more information about it. And then the last thing is, if you wanna follow me on social media, I'm Hillary underscore McCaskey underscore coaching. And then I also have a plain Jane Enneagram account. Um, so it's like I have my personal-ish Enneagram account and then uh, my just Enneagram account and that is called Enneagram and Coaching. Go follow me on those two places if you want to. And that's all I have guys, until next time. Bye guys.